Scammers are using some new technology to clone voices and leave fake voicemails. This is according to the Better Business Bureau, and you might get a fake message from your boss telling you to wire thousands of dollars for a project. Bureau says voice cloning technology has advanced so much that anyone with the right software can do it. All they need is a small sample of your voice, and they can capture the sample of your voice maybe from videos you're posting online through social media channels, uh, or any other areas where your voice may be uh, presented out there. Right now, the Bureau says this scam is mainly targeting businesses, but they want the, everybody to really learn about this because, for example, voice cloning could imitate a candidate in this year's election asking for donations. It may also be used for a fake emergency message from a friend or relative. When in doubt, hang up. Call the source back directly to the number that you know them to belong to. If it's a family member or friend, call them directly on their phone number, ask questions, and never feel pressure to give up any personal information or never wire uh, transfer money or pay with a gift card. The Bureau also recommends making sure email is secure. You want to train staff at a business on what to look for and confirm all payment requests before making a transfer. Well, the coronavirus is causing anguish, not only for loved ones of infected patients, but for some soon to be parents. Adoptions from China have been put on hold and tomorrow, a family who is racing against time to adopt a 13 year old before he turns 14 when China forbids all adoptions. We start off tomorrow with some cloud cover, more sunshine by the afternoon, but temperatures just not going to warm up a whole lot. Highs that will be in the upper 20s. Then we get in on a little bit of a warming trend. Those numbers go into the middle 30s with sunshine on Friday, and we're back into the 40s, close to 50 by the end of the weekend. That's also when that next chance for rain is going to arrive Sunday night into Monday. Thanks for joining us here on the Now Indy. The news at 6 starts right now. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. I didn't think they were going to catch nobody, but I do, because you never know. If they kill four people, they don't care about. They don't care about humanity, period. And they not messed up by killing nobody else. So I'm definitely happy they off the street. Four teens arrested in connection to the murders of four people on the northeast side. What neighbors are telling us, plus the city shows off one way they are trying to reduce violence. Coping with loss and tragedy. That's what students at Warren Central High School have had to do with the deaths of classmates. Tonight, we're helping students at the school tell their own story in their own words. Another major change planned for downtown Carmel. What is being proposed? What could be torn down? And why not everyone is on board? Sunshine, I know what you're thinking. How long will this last and when will it warm up? And good evening to you here at 6 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. First at 6, a break in the case. Four teenagers arrested and charged in connection to a quadruple homicide on the city's northeast side. RTV6's Troy Washington uncovering new details about the investigation. And she goes into the community talking to neighbors about the arrests and the impact this crime has had on their neighborhood. Gunshots, you're just immune to it. Like, you just hear gunshots, you don't even run no more. Charmaine Childs doesn't even flinch when she hears gunshots in Carriage House East anymore, but she admits chills ran down her spine after hearing about the quadruple murder not far from her doorstep. They kill four people they don't care about. They don't care about humanity, period. When investigators announced they'd arrested four people, this mother couldn't help but to finally exhale. She said she's been it's hearing gunshots in the distance two weeks ago. They just, it's just all kids. Now eight lives gone. She says eight because Marcel Wills, Braxton Ford, Kimari Hunt, and Jalen Roberts lost their lives. But the suspects, Rodrees Anderson, Cameron Brooks, Desmond Banks, and LaShawn Watkins could spend the rest of their lives in prison if convicted of the crimes. There are four separate counts of, of murder. There are four separate counts of felony murder. Uh, we are literally talking in the hundreds and hundreds of years uh, that these individuals individuals are potentially going to serve. We reached out to the family of the victims to get their reaction to the arrest. Right now they tell us that they are focused on laying their loved ones to rest and continuing the grieving process. According to investigators, witnesses and surveillance from the complex along with social media posts led them straight to the suspects. In fact, tracking down the getaway vehicle made all the difference. Court documents say illegal gambling was going on here and suspects shot and killed the victims, then left the place ransacked. Working for you on the northeast side, Troy Washington, RTV6. 
and all four suspects will face a judge tomorrow. We are now learning the dates and times of the funerals for the four victims. That's posted right now on the RTV6 app and our website, theindychannel.com, at the bottom of this story. One way the city of Indianapolis is trying to reduce violence is through an organization called Voices. It's a treatment program that provides services to court-appointed boys of middle and high school age. Officials with Voices say the program is meant to address the cumulative effects of violence, trauma, cyclical poverty, and limited high-quality educational opportunities. Last year, Voices received one of Indianapolis's 2019 violence prevention grants, and they say the funding has made a difference. It's huge. Um, we're a really small organization, and so when we get <clears throat> grant awards like that, that allows us to be able to be really intentional in the work that we're doing. So we're able to bring on additional staff to do that one-on-one -on -one care or that relationship building with kids. We're able to get out into the community more. Um, just that having that extra resources for an organization like this, is it, it makes a world of difference. Well, Voices tries to expose boys to educational enrichment, cognitive behavioral and art therapies, self-expression workshops, life skills groups, and community engagement projects. The organization says just 11% of the boys involved in the program have reoffended. If you have any safety concerns involving you or your children and you aren't getting answers or the help you need, let us know. Email us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. And just about sunset time, but don't worry, sunshine returns, especially tomorrow afternoon, and then a lot more as we get to Friday. 36 degrees, uh, the humidity is low, and the wind relatively light out of the northwest. Our temperatures are headed for the lower 20s, but we're also in this dry stretch. We don't have anything in the forecast until probably late Sunday night, and off to the northwest, you find a little area of snow, portions of uh, Nebraska and Kansas. This will be pushed to the south by colder air that's going to filter into the state. Briefly colder, that northwest wind will drive our low temperatures by Friday morning down to 15. That's the coldest morning in the forecast. I'm anxious to show you the warmest afternoon. We'll do that shortly. And progress is good, but it's a shame that we have to leave. Major changes are planned for a popular downtown Carmel Corner. This shopping center at 126 and Range Line could soon be replaced with new luxury condominiums. rtv 6s Megan Sanctorum found out that while some welcome the change, others worry about the loss of space for small businesses. The southwest corner of 126th and Range Line Road could soon look a lot different. The shopping center replaced with condos and two-story homes. This is a rendering from the developer of what the project could look like. City leaders say it is still in the very early stages of development and they plan to present official renderings to the council for approval in the next few months. So far, residents seem to have mixed opinions about this project. I think it's kind of sad. I think we have enough condos in Carmel, and I'd kind of like to see this stay as it is. I think condos are important. There are a lot of new families coming in, uh, but uh, I think the businesses are important as well. Uh, some of them are so niche, and people love uh, having small restaurants close by. The proposal does not include commercial space, leaving the shops and restaurants here right now to find a new location. City leaders say they'll work with the businesses when that time comes, and the developer will have to give them 12 months notice to find a new place. Progress is good, but it's a shame that we have to leave. You know, it's got pluses and minuses, and in the long run, I think it's good for the city. It's just sad to leave. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. And we will continue to follow this story and let you know once the plan is presented to the Carmel City Council. Hiring Hoosiers is an RTV6 initiative to connect you to the job and career you want. We're now learning a medical tech company based in India will build their North American headquarters in Noblesville. Panacea Medical Technologies Incorporated is expanding their operations into the United States. The company plans to build a 20,000 square foot facility at 131st Street and Oleo Road. Panacea will bring uh, 65 full-time positions to Hamilton County by 2023. The groundbreaking is set to begin sometime in the summer of 2020. It's hard to deal with loss at any age. But students at Warren Central High School know the feeling of loss and tragedy more than most. RTV6 teamed up with students at Warren Central, helping them tell their own story about coping and healing. Carmel's Rajiv Rahm has been tearing it up on the tennis court, even winning the Australian Open doubles title. We'll share the real story behind that victory when we sit down with Rahm. That's next in the Sports Extra Spotlight. 
And temperature change, it's a constant, isn't it? Temperatures will be going downhill for a while, but then when we see an increase, it will be noticeable and warmer temperatures in the weekend will arrive at the same time. The 2020 Altima. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. RTV6 is collaborating with four area high schools on a national campaign known as the News Literacy Project. The aim to reach young people and help them to become critical consumers of news and information and to make smart decisions about what to trust, share, and act on. As journalists, we push them to ask thought-provoking questions and zero in on issues impacting their local circles and communities. I worked with student journalists at Warren Central High School on Indianapolis's east side. The goal is to convey the vital role of a free press in a democracy. And how has it helped and why could this be the model for other schools around the country? To show young people the importance of being informed, engaged participants in civic issues. It is the News Literacy Project, an effort RTV6 and its parent company Scripps Media have joined. I'm going to go to college for video production. I plan to go to IUPUR. To, uh, to major in telecommunications. Ball State to go into their meteorology and climatology program. I met with talented young student journalists at Warren Central High School to produce with them a story focusing on a key issue in their eyes from their experiences. The topic has to be something that you guys feel is important in your community or school that needs attention or light shined on it. We brainstormed. Every district should have free school lunches mm -hmm. um, because you know you can't assume that everybody has the means to pay for lunch or bring their lunch either. We discussed. Like teens go through Therapy. a lot. A lot. And like, I mean, I feel like there's so much expected of us. We asked questions. Why are you making it so hard? Like if we're told to come to you, what do you expect us mm -hmm. to do when you tell us no? We exchanged ideas like in any newsroom. Teen violence is a very big topic in Warren Central because of all of our, like, there's been, I don't know, countless of people passing away. And that was the topic, the issue that resonated with this group. We talked about ways to approach Warren Central's grappling with loss, what worked, and what was missing. Why did this school community have to learn to cope with losing classmates and loved ones? And who could speak to the issue? I laid out their challenge, their assignment. It was they who came up with the questions, sought out the people to interview, and guided the direction of the story. You've experienced it yourself, but how have you seen it affect your family, friends, and loved ones. What have you done to reach out to students in need of support? Together, from inception to air, we produced a story in their voice, which these students feel needs attention in their Warren Central High School community. Coping with loss due to teen violence. Thumbing through the yearbooks triggers the memories. He was such a funny, like he always brightened the room yeah. every single time. The students here have had to learn to cope with losing friends and classmates to violence and the tragedy. He was killed from a senseless act of gun violence. I remember just waking up to the bad news. My mom rushed in and told me that Dijon had got shot. It was another young, young person named Angel who was killed. And I feel like it traumatized the entire Warren Central as a, as a school and it those people were like family to me, I guess you could say. Tyler Hopkins is a senior now, but he'll never forget the weekend in May of 2017 when gunfire killed 17-year-old Angel Mejia Alfaro and critically hurt football standout 18-year-old Dejon Anderson. I will never forget that Monday where we lost Angel. Dejon's fighting for his life in the hospital and we didn't have kids kids came to school, which I thought was huge. They didn't want to stay home. They wanted to be here. Teachers like Courtney Burchett became a support system for students here. I just could remember seeing people cry and different types of groups of people getting together and just hugging each other. Dijon eventually lost a fight for his life. And this was in 2016, Dijon picked me for our teacher appreciation. Ms. Burchett, along with other teachers, classmates, counselors, and administrators help each other cope and our services were amazing. They provided support dogs and, and just any outlet of grief that the kids needed um, was provided. They bring in therapy dogs, actually, and that kind of helped me mentally. It helps to have one of these pups around. This is Lainey, the therapy dog here at Warren. 
Laney helps students deal with loss or just a tough time. But if you ask any of the students rushing through these halls, going to and from class, they will tell you they could use a little extra support. It's the call to action students want to stress, the need for ongoing support even beyond times of tragedy. And tragedy has been reoccurring here since we've lost classmates to teen violence, car crashes, house fires, and addiction. And I feel like if they just keep it consistent and not just stop for like a, like a, like a short term of time, I feel like it could help a lot of people mentally. I think between myself and a lot of other adults, they feel comfortable in sharing their problems and issues. And sometimes you just gotta check on them and make sure they're okay because they don't really wanna speak about what's going on. Warren Central students say the stress of balancing schoolwork, sports, extracurricular activities, friends and family is tough enough without having to process the deaths of classmates. They'd like consistent resources available to help manage mental health issues and stress, as well as an ear to listen. Students are responding to their own call to action too, knowing they have to support each other too. I feel like if I were to be more in certain people's lives, then I could have possibly stopped certain people from, you know, being killed or being in the wrong situation at the wrong time. We'll never forget what happened that May, and we can just keep preaching to kids that you got to make sure that listen to your parents, make those right decisions, and your life can really just change in an instant. But our educators are here are so invested in our kids, it's like losing a member of their family because that's how tight-knit this community is. Working for you in Warren Township, I'm Zoe Fisher. And I'm Brad Batista. And I'm Will Matchett. And a special thanks to all the students who worked with me on that project. There has been a positive change and a movement since the deaths of Deshaun Anderson and Angel Mejia. One of Anderson's friends is Brandon Warren, who received the RTV6 Jefferson Award for Multiplying Good last year. Brandon founded We Live Inc., a youth-led organization focused on curbing teen violence. It started at Warren Central and has spread to schools across the Indianapolis metro area. Last August, the group held a peace walk to help end gun violence in in Indy. 616, temperatures today not as cold as they will be tomorrow. I think tomorrow's our coldest 24 hour stretch within the entire seven day forecast. Love looking at this. We've got some character in the sky tonight, setting sun and uh, mid level clouds rolling into central Indiana. The clouds will take over for a period through probably early tomorrow afternoon. Then we'll see more sunshine. Won't be long and we spring forward March 8th. So the sun will be with us through the uh, entire evening news block. Temperature 32 in Logansport, 35 in Frankfurt. All that sunshine today helped the temperature climb uh, into the low 40s in a few spots. Bedford's one of those. Seymour as well, 37 in Greensburg and Bloomington, two degrees warmer. Where are we headed tonight? Temperatures will slowly fall, but with the clouds increasing, that will uh, keep temperatures from falling off too much. It's really tomorrow night into Friday morning where we'll have the coldest temperatures in the forecast, but we'll be at 23 or 24 tomorrow morning. Nice to see a dry stretch. We had that stretch in the middle of the month where we had 10 straight days of a trace or more of precipitation. Dry today, and then we're dry tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, even most of Sunday. It's probably not until Sunday night that we begin to see some rain. Temperatures during the morning hours tomorrow with a lot more cloud cover will be slow to change. 23, 8 a.m., 26 at noon. Afternoon readings struggle to hit 30, and in most cases will fall short of that. The change in the afternoon will be uh, at least getting a little more sunshine into the picture. As you look at the cloud cover at 7 a.m. tomorrow, then you see a few flurries stream off of Lake Michigan. That's really what it would be, flurries though. And then in the afternoon, absence of cloud cover means more in the way of sunshine. Temperatures range from 26 to about 32 across the region. Friday morning, you'll feel this, temperatures in the teens. We won't repeat these cold temperatures, though, uh, through the seven-day forecast. But looking beyond the six- to ten-day outlook, as we start to think about March, looks like a cold end to February. Temperatures in the teens down to the south as well. Friday, one of the big changes after that cold start will be all the sunshine that helps boost our temperature. We will climb above the freezing. Then as we get to the weekend, warmer temperatures, instead of 35, we'll be at about 45 degrees on the Saturday. Temperatures on Sunday a little warmer than that. Our chance for rain increases Sunday night and Monday. But 48, the warmest temperature, 14, the coldest temperature. The saying goes, March comes in like a lion. And then out like a lamb. Yeah. Lamb. Well, you don't know which way it's going to come right. in. you got to keep your <laughs> no, eyes on No, be careful. <laughs> All right, Dave First is here with sports.
Hey guys, back from the break. Yeah, the Pacers easing into their work week after a six-day layoff. Good news for Victor Oladipo. As expected, his minute restriction has now been lifted, although he still won't play in the second night of back-to-back. Pacer games. Pacers resume their season Friday night when they play at the Knicks. Well, good to be to you soon. It'll be warm enough to play outdoor tennis here. If you're Carmel's Rajiv Ram, though, you've not only been playing, but winning at a very high level. In fact, the Aussie Open mixed doubles champ doubled down this month in a double play in the Sports Extra Spotlight. Whether it's the entrance, the straight set victory, or the celebration, perhaps the real story behind Carmel's Rajiv Ram winning the Australian Open doubles title is the fact he didn't really properly prepare. From his home in Northern California, he explains that after a trip to India to attend a wedding, he fought a nasty viral infection leading up to the major. I didn't have the kind of offseason I wanted. I didn't put in any training, hardly hit any balls, and just kind of went down to Australia hoping to feel better, really. And uh, I don't know how these things work. Maybe that should be a recipe for that I should use a bit longer, a bit more often. But, uh, you know, I ended up playing great when it came to Melbourne, which was about three weeks into my trip. You know, it's very Michael Jordan-like. You feel ill, you come yeah. back, you know, you rise to the occasion. This, this is a Cinderella story, man. Yeah, I guess so. But the swing is truly major. That's now two doubles titles in as many Australian Opens. You're 35 years old. you got a couple of doubles titles now under your belt. Are you reaching your prime right now? I, I mean, I don't know. How does this work? Well, I mean... You know, I played singles as a priority until 2017 or 16, really. So, I mean, you know, yeah, in, in some ways, in the doubles world, I am reaching my prime right now, but I've only really worked at it for a few years where some of the guys I'm playing against have kind of been at it for a bit longer. And so I think, uh, you know, I feel good, my body feels good, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy with where my game is at. And what a way to begin the tennis season. And the idea is that for Rajiv and his partner, Joe Salisbury, a trophy at the Aussie Open is just the beginning. Bottom line, if, if it's singles, doubles, mixed doubles, or whatever, at the end of the day, if you're holding up something and they're taking your picture left and right, <laughs> that's that's pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, it's usually pretty good if you have the trophy at the end of the week. Uh, so, you know, anytime that happens, I definitely appreciate those moments and appreciate the people that, uh, you know, helped me get to that point. Yeah, there's really no off-season in tennis. The circuit picks up in Dubai this weekend. From there, it's on to Indian Wells in California at the beginning of March, then Miami from there. And some IndyCar news this morning. Official word that James Hinchcliffe will rejoin Andretti Autosport for three races this season. He'll drive the number 29 Genesis Honda for the road course race at the Speedway, then the Indy 500, then the race down at the Texas Motor Speedway in June. Hinch was left scrambling after Schmidt-Peterson went in a different driving direction. And when Andretti couldn't do a deal with Fernando Alonso for the 500, a deal with Hinch was a natural. Congratulations. We'll have IU and Butler tonight at 11. Until then, the new Newton 6 continues after this. Get better water. Contact Culligan. Remember, we want your pictures for our RTV6 photo of the day segment. You can email them to news at wrtv.com. We have some examples of past winners on the screen right now. It can be anything you would put into a family photo album. If you choose, if we choose your picture, we'll air it right here on the news at 6. Again, that email is news at wrtv.com. Here's the sunset of the day. What the great picture. picture. The yeah. only one we'll have. Right. In, enjoy it. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Nice to see at least a glimpse of some sunshine. Say hello to Zach and Zoe. They're hey, Zach all and Zoe. piled up in comfort. Karen Jacobs sent that in. If you're walking the dogs this evening, dry with temperatures eventually into the 20s. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back with you at 7 o'clock.